Once upon a time, during the Second Peloponnesian War, a decisive event unfolded in the city-state of Syracuse, located in Sicily. The Siege of Syracuse, which took place from 415 to 413 BCE, marked a crucial phase of the war between Athens and its allies against Syracuse and Sparta. Alcibiades, a nephew of the renowned Athenian statesman Pericles, persuaded the Athenians that capturing Sicily would provide them with abundant resources to defeat their enemies. Sicily's grain was a vital asset, and by cutting off its supply, Athens could turn the tide of the war in their favor. With this ambitious plan in mind, the Athenians assembled an impressive expeditionary force. Led by three generals, Alcibiades, Lamachus, and Nicias, the Athenian force set sail in June 415 BCE. It was the most extravagant and expensive Hellenic force ever assembled by a single city at that time. The fleet consisted of 134 triremes, with 100 from Athens and the rest from Athenian allies. Accompanying the navy were supply ships and various other vessels, carrying a total of around 27,000 officers and men. Originally, the plan was to launch a swift demonstration of force against Syracuse and then return to Greece. However, Alcibiades had different ideas. He believed the expedition should incite political opposition to Syracuse within Sicily. Lamachus, on the other hand, advocated for an immediate attack on the unprepared city, but Alcibiades prevailed, leading to a change in the course of events. As the Athenians attempted to garner support from other Sicilian cities, their efforts proved fruitless, leaving no significant city aligned with Athens. Syracuse, taking advantage of this time, fortified its defenses, preparing for the impending Athenian attack. In the midst of these developments, Alcibiades was summoned back to Athens to face charges of impiety. With Alcibiades gone, Nicias and Lamachus launched an assault on Syracuse and emerged victorious in battle. However, the arrival of winter halted further progress, and the Athenians suspended offensive operations. What was initially planned as a swift campaign turned into a prolonged siege, draining Athenian resources and morale. Meanwhile, Alcibiades, fearing for his life, managed to escape Athens and sought refuge in Sparta. Not only did he disclose Athens' plans to attack Syracuse, but he also spoke in support of a plea for aid from the Syracusans in the Spartan assembly. Responding to this plea, the Spartans dispatched their skilled general, Gelippus, along with a force of their own. In the spring of 414 BCE, the Athenians resumed their offensive operations against Syracuse. Despite the city's efforts to strengthen its defenses, the Athenians managed to capture the fortifications at Euryalus and push the Syracusans back within their city walls. The Athenians constructed a fortification known as the Circle and demolished several Syracusan counterwalls. Tragically, Lamachus lost his life in the fighting, leaving Nicias as the ineffective leader. As Syracuse faced despair and defeat seemed imminent, a Corinthian ship arrived in the harbor, bringing news of impending help. Encouraged by this development, the leaders of Syracuse resolved to continue their resistance. Gelippus's forces landed in northern Sicily and marched to Syracuse, with Nicias failing to challenge them along the way. Gelippus reinforced the city's defenses and, in the spring of 413 BCE, achieved a stunning victory over the Athenian navy, capturing its base. Instead of losing face by abandoning the siege, the Athenians made the decision to send a second expedition, led by the esteemed general Demosthenes. This expedition comprised 73 triremes carrying 5,000 hoplites and 3,000 bowmen, slingers, and javelin throwers, a force of approximately 15,000 men. The second expedition arrived at Syracuse in July 413 BCE, setting the stage for a critical phase of the siege. Demosthenes, leading the second expedition, made an unsuccessful attempt to destroy one of the Syracusan counterwalls. Undeterred, he launched a surprise night attack that initially proved successful. The Athenians managed to capture Euryalus and a significant portion of the Epipolon Plateau. However, the defenders regrouped swiftly and launched a counterattack, catching the Athenians off guard and inflicting heavy casualties. Cut off from supplies and vulnerable to enemy cavalry, the Athenians sought to escape the harbor of Syracuse in September 413 BCE, using 110 ships, some of which were in poor condition. Their breakout attempt was met with obstacles, as a barrier of blocked ships and numerous Corinthian and Syracusan vessels blocked their path in the Great Harbor. The ensuing naval battle ended in defeat for Athens, with the loss of 50 ships compared to their enemy's 26. Despite having a remaining fleet of 60 triremes, the Athenian generals wanted to attempt another breakout, but the crews refused and instead demanded an overland retreat. The Athenians, amid Syracusan victory celebrations, delayed their retreat for 36 hours due to false information that the escape route was blocked. Once the retreat commenced, around 6,000 Athenian soldiers led by Demosthenes were offered freedom if they deserted, but they chose to fight on. 
However, as the situation became increasingly hopeless, the Athenian commander surrendered when given a guarantee that his men's lives would be spared. Another group of 1,000 soldiers also surrendered. Tragically, Nicias and Demosthenes were executed against the wishes of Gelippus, the Spartan general. Out of the 45,000 to 50,000 individuals who participated in the Athenian expedition, these 7,000 soldiers were sent to the stone quarries of Syracuse. The cost of the expedition was significant for Athens, resulting in the loss of around 200 triremes. Thucydides, the historian, remarked that this event was the most significant achievement and also the most catastrophic defeat in Hellenic history. It brought great glory to the victors while plunging the defeated Athenians into calamity. The devastating defeat of the Athenian fleet and army in Sicily had a profound impact on the Athenian Empire. It triggered revolts in various regions, including Euboea, Lesbos, and Chios, which turned against Athens. Sparta took advantage of the situation and constructed a fleet of 100 warships, while Persia sought to regain control over its previously lost territories in Ionia. In 410 BCE, Athens had the opportunity for peace, but the Athenian people, buoyed by a naval victory, rejected the offers from Sparta. However, in 405 BCE, a critical event occurred known as the Battle of Egospotami. While the Athenian fleet was beached at the Hellespont for resupply, it was unexpectedly attacked and captured by Lysander, the Spartan naval commander. This victory severely weakened Athens' position, as Lysander went on to capture the remaining Athenian garrisons at the Hellespont and cut off their access to wheat supplies from Ukraine. To further strain Athens' limited food stocks, the Spartans allowed the Athenian prisoners to return home. Subsequently, Pausanias, the second Spartan king, led a sizable land force to Athens, besieging the city by land, while Lysander blockaded it by sea with 150 ships. Starved into submission, Athens was forced to surrender in 404 BCE. There were voices calling for the complete destruction of the city and the enslavement of its people, particularly from Corinth and Thebes. However, the Spartans, to their credit, rejected these extreme proposals. Instead, they demanded the demolition of Athens' long walls and fortifications. Athens was also required to relinquish all its foreign territories in its fleet, becoming an ally of Sparta and accepting its leadership. With this surrender, the Peloponnesian Wars came to an end, and so did the period of Athenian supremacy. The conflict had lasting repercussions, reshaping the political landscape of ancient Greece and marking a shift in power dynamics within the region.